Hi everybody, uh, tonight I would like to talk about uh, something uh, that is not gear. Usually I know we do a lot of talking gear and cameras and lenses and everything, but there's obviously another aspect to taking pictures and that is the settings you do for your cameras, for the cameras you have. And uh, I would like to do a series of videos where I talk about the settings that I personally use and those are the ones that work for me but however uh, you may not transfer them to your photography one to one but you may be able to get something out of it and use it in your everyday photography. So um, I will show to you examples based on the Sony A6000 but it's basically um, things that are related to any camera so we'll just go through the settings I will tell you what uh, the settings are and why I use them and basically uh, well it's up to you to decide what you can use uh, to, uh, in in the first episode I'm gonna talk about my settings for street photography uh, I made some notes so I will go through them and try not to forget anything so the first one is ISO and there's a lot of discussions uh, about usable ISO ranges on cameras. Um, there's one thing, and that is quite important. Um, I personally prefer to have a grainy shot that I try to recover in post-processing rather than a shaky shot. I don't like camera shake at all and uh, that's something that I try to avoid at any cost so I rather go a little bit further up in the ISO range uh, rather than having uh, the risk of either not being able to take a shot or having it blurry because the shutter speed uh, goes too far down. And with uh, the let me just show you how I set it on this camera for example I really go all the way up and I set it to auto ISO and then I select the range in this camera in this camera in raw it just gives me the native range and that's from 100 to 25,600 and I really set that as my ISO range uh, the second thing is uh, exposure metering. Um, in street photography, I rather have my um, metering set to spot metering or center metering because um, I might have a very broad contrast um, within the picture or, or contrast in, in light or in light conditions. and. Obviously, I will select my subject that I want to take the picture off and I want that to be in focus. Uh, usually, the, the dynamic ranges of these cameras allow for some recovering afterwards in post-processing and that can be done. But I really want the optimal focus, uh, sorry, the optimal uh, exposure to be on the subject that I'm focusing on. So, I select... Um, in this case, um, I've saved it in one of my positions, but I want to show you while we go. And here I go on to the exposure metering and set it to spot. Uh, every camera is slightly different, but uh, most of these functions should be available in any camera that you use. Then we have... Um, then we have... Uh, auto focus lock and auto exposure lock um, I want to have those on my shutter button um, I don't want to have to press a separate button street photography is very much about speed and I want to keep the speed as high as possible so um, I set those and I might then recompose the the frame but I want to focus and expose on the subject that I'm interested in and then I might just shift it a little bit to have the uh, the composition uh, differently um, let me just see if, if we can quickly uh, go to those settings here even though those are quite specific and you might find them in a totally different place uh, in your camera but in this one it's um, it's no it's somewhere around here um, nope. 
See, this is what I don't like about this uh, menu system in the Sony's that uh, there's no real logic. Um, this one is uh, auto exposure lock with shutter and um, auto focus with shutter. Uh, those are the things that um, that are important to me. Then um, the auto focus point in street photography as with the exposure and the thing the issue with recomposing the image i try to put it on um, the center and that would mean i pick uh, in this case it's called flexible spot and depending on the lighting conditions i go either large medium or small in my experience the larger it is the faster and more reliable it is in terms of light the smaller it is obviously um, uh, the better it is for for accuracy in terms of focusing on a specific point in the frame uh, then we have um, what I then do to actually take the pictures and now my battery may be running out so I will be back in a second. Please hold on and uh, don't go away. Here we are back again. Sorry about that. Um, I was just saying um, the settings for the camera then are would be manual mode. Um, I do the manual mode because like this I can decide what speed and what aperture to use and the speed and apertures especially in street photography are quite essential and uh, because you, you may have to deal with fast moving subjects and so i go usually if i use a 35 or 50 millimeter lens i go at least to 1 200th or even 1 250th of a second and depending on the reliability and the speed of the autofocus um, you will have to consider how much depth of field you will need to be to be on the safe side and have the subject in focus so if i have a camera that has a good autofocus system um, maybe even tracking autofocus even though i wouldn't rely on that for street photography if you're really moving fast and you just have a, a split second to press the shutter and, and get the picture um i would actually more rely on a smaller aperture so go up to for example i would say um sorry this was the wrong one and then go up to 5.6 for example and that will give you that margin say you're standing here you have a subject walking towards you, a person walking towards you you focus that person takes a step and is maybe like a foot or like 30 centimeters closer to you or, or half a meter um, and it's it's uh, he or she is still going to be in focus and that's something that is really important um, that is especially true with manual focus cameras like the Leicas where you really have to cover a, a, a certain range because you don't have you don't necessarily have the time to focus on the subject so um, one thing that it has nothing to do with specific technical settings obviously leave your lens cap off the lens uh, leave the camera on um, because you won't have time to um, take the cap off or take even worse take the camera out of your bag uh, take the cap off and and things like that you may do that for landscape photography um, but not for street photography um, the uh, leaving the camera on leads me to another point personally I uh, prefer to carry a few more batteries than to have to switch on and off the camera all the time because first of all many of these cameras are not extremely fast in powering up and get being ready to to fire um, and also you really sometimes it's really about split seconds and um, so I, I try to um, set the uh, the auto off function um, to off or to the longest possible uh, period of time that's another thing um, the auto preview function uh, that is first of all something that uses up some energy and also 
in the normal situations you will be in you don't have the time to evaluate and especially it's worthless because usually you can't take a second shot so better take a few shots in a row when you're taking the shot and then forget it and then check when you get back home and put them onto your computer and and uh, post process the images um the uh, the autofocus assist lamp off uh, if your camera allows for that turn it off it's it's very annoying to have or it's it's annoying for the person it attracts attention um if you have that blinking light illuminating the person and at a certain distance it won't even work because uh, those those uh, autofocus assist lamps work at closer ranges uh, or very dark and even there are just at closer ranges um, another thing turn all the sounds off I'm just gonna show you for example on the Sony these functions are in the settings usually if you go back here you have um, audio signals you turn them off um, the focus confirmation will not sound but um, anyway um, if the focus didn't catch bad luck uh, try it another time um, and other sounds some cameras even have sounds like shutter simulation sounds because they're so quiet and people just want to hear something going click clack and uh, turn those off too I suggest it's it's really useless um, take the shot as quiet as possible um, anything else um, not much really um, I try to keep my camera in my hand when I'm really walking around to take pictures and as handy as possible when I'm even when I'm not specifically looking for pictures and the power thing uh, let me get back to that um, it depends on your camera very much as admit with any other things I said um, you have to evaluate for yourself if, if your camera like the Sony's for example are not very power efficient so you will need a few batteries maybe to go through a day so better take three batteries with you four batteries with you but have the camera always ready rather than having to uh, save energy and then finding out that at the at the decisive moment um, the camera wasn't ready to shoot and that really is very 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 annoying uh, I hope I could help you if you have specific questions not necessarily about specific cameras because I can only tell you about the cameras I, I know and I use and I have but if you have general questions post a comment down below and I will try to answer them um, for the rest enjoy street shooting and in the next videos I will try to tell you more about event shooting and portrait shooting those are the areas that I would like to cover in this thank you very much and have a great night and see you back here soon bye bye